This is KGW News at Sunrise. You know, this is my baby, baby, baby brother, you know, and just something like this is just beyond me. This morning, we have more information about a young man shot to death over the weekend in Portland. We spoke with some of his brothers who say they still don't understand how this happened. Plus. We want people from everywhere on all demographics to come and enjoy themselves. Yeah, that is an open invitation to a new pickleball court in Northeast Portland. And that's not the only activity available. When you can get in on the games coming up this morning in 15 minutes. Plus, oh, we had to take you outside on this beautiful April morning. Portland's living room, very quiet right now, but you can bet it's gonna be bustling later today with folks out there on the bricks soaking up the sun. Good Thursday morning, everybody. The weather, so nice. We called in two meteorologists this morning. I mean, it's really hard. You got a lot to figure out here. Will it be 80? Will it not be 80? Yes. So we really had to put our best men on it. Uh, it's, it's a little <laughs> embarrassing because we're so out of practice uh, with forecasting <laughs> warm weather that no. we, we both came in. I'm oh in for, I'll be your Drew Cardi this morning. <laughs> exactly. Drew and Christine are off. So we called in Chris for double duty. You're going to be helping me out with the news this morning. But you are the star of the show with that forecast. Uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, 77 in the Rose City. We had forecast. 75 and today on paper looks like it has to be at least a couple if not three degrees warmer and that puts us up to an expected high temperature of 80. It is very to me June like out there this morning when you step outdoors. A lot of you waking up with temperatures of 50 or better. The airport's at 54. We'll go 66 at noon. Yesterday it was 62 at noon and we'll go right around 80 for a high temperature. It still looks like tomorrow is going to be the warmest of the week and that seven day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Rod. This morning, we know more about the man shot and killed in a Southeast Portland business over the weekend and how his murder is connected to another deadly shooting Monday night. Zachary Freeman was 29 years old and leaves behind a big family, including three brothers. Mike Benner spoke with them about their sudden loss and how new details about the case are weighing heavily on them. Like we would have never expected anything like this happen a million years, you know. Isaac Wilson still can't believe it's real. It being the shooting death of his little brother, Zachary Freeman. You know, this is my baby, baby, baby brother, you know, and just something like this is just beyond me. Zachary was shot and killed Sunday morning inside a business near Southeast 52nd and Foster. Family says detectives have shared very little about the shooting. There's so many different scenarios that play in my head that what could it lead up to and I just want to get some closure. But getting that closure will be difficult, if not impossible, with Zachary's suspected killer also dead. Police shot and killed that person during a pursuit on Southeast 82nd Avenue late Monday night. Me, truthfully, I told the family I'd rather have seen the guy's face and put him behind I don't bars. Wish death on no man. You know, I don't wish death on anybody. What family does wish for is more time with Zachary, who, according to another brother, was a remarkable human being. So when you think of Zachary Michael Freeman, you think of love, life, family, respect, honor integrity a sentiment echoed by all of Zachary's surviving brothers oh, he always brought something he brought love joy peace I'm Mike Benner for KGW News oh. Crime Stoppers is now offering a reward for information about a shooting that killed three young men in broad daylight late last month Around noon on March 25th, police say several suspects ran up to a car near North Foss Court and Foss Avenue. They fired several rounds into the car, killing two teenagers, Eskender Tamra and Babu Dowdy. A 20-year-old man also died. According to witnesses, the suspects ran to a parked car and then drove away. The two teens were students at Franklin and Roosevelt High Schools. So far, no one has been arrested. Crime Stoppers is offering a cash reward of up to $2,500 for information about this shooting. More than 20 years ago, a group of teenagers who became known as the Redmond Five were convicted of killing 52-year-old Barbara Thomas. They each got life in prison, but two are now being released early. Their sentences were commuted by Governor Kate Brown in 2021. 
As Alma McCarty reports, one of them could walk free tomorrow. More than 20 years ago in Redmond, five teens, including Barbara Thomas's own son, brutally killed the 52-year-old woman. They beat her with a bottle and shot her in the head. At the time, prosecutors told reporters the group had several ideas on how to kill her. The indictment alleges in one fashion electrocution, in another fashion uh, by injecting uh, Mrs. Thomas with a bleach. Canadian immigration officers arrested the teens the next day as they attempted to cross the border in the victim's car. All five faced nearly two dozen felony counts from aggravated murder to assault and robbery. At that time, Measure 11 imposed mandatory minimum sentences for serious crimes regardless of age. For aggravated murder, that meant a minimum of life in prison. We believe that all five of the individuals were uh, substantially responsible for the murder of Mrs. Thomas. And all five were convicted. But in 2019, the law changed. In Oregon, teenagers are no longer automatically charged as adults for Measure 11 crimes. So in 2021, Governor Kate Brown commuted their sentences along with many others, and parole became a possibility. Now, in 2023, two of those responsible for the Thomas murder are on the way out. Justin Link was the person who first suggested that the group of five murder Barbara Thomas, and ultimately he is the one who told his companions to finish the job and to kill Barbara Thomas. Justin Link, 17 at the time of the crime, now nearing 40, will be released Friday. I think it was the correct um, legal decision because the parole board was tasked with assessing whether or not Mr. Link has been rehabilitated. And I think there's no real question that he has been. After a parole board hearing last week, Seth Koch was also granted early release. He will get out of prison mid-June. As for the other three, Lucretia Carl was released in 2021. A parole board hearing is set for Ashley Summers next week. And Adam Thomas, who was 18 at the time of the murder, could be eligible for parole in a couple of years. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Now to a few more headlines we're tracking this morning. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office is searching for a 78 year old man named Carol Parkins. We've got a picture on your screen. His family says he left home Saturday morning to look for deer and elk antlers in the woods, but never returned. Family later found his truck off Malala Forest Road. The Sheriff's Office launched a rescue mission and have been searching for four days. They're asking for anyone who may have seen Parkins to give them a call. A Proud Boys member found guilty of assault and riot charges will be sentenced this afternoon. Tusi Tala Tiny Tosi was convicted of inciting and participating in a brawl back in 2021 in East Portland. Reports show Tosi stood on a truck bed, made transphobic remarks, and called the Proud Boys members charged for storming the U.S. Capitol on January 6th political prisoners. A judge found him guilty on 10 different counts in early March. And Portland City Council approved a policy for police body cameras on Wednesday. The police union reached an agreement with the city earlier this week after months of negotiations. They decided officers won't be allowed to watch the body camera video before writing a report in any serious use of force case. However, in incidents where no one is seriously hurt, officers will be allowed to watch the video after their initial statement and then update the report. And those are your morning headlines. Okay, you guys, take a look at this. I know you are going to love it. I mean, who wants to stay indoors when the weather this is this nice? So sunrise photographer Eric Patterson is on Savi Island. He's got a little fire pit by the river. He does have, full disclosure, a home on Savi Island, a floating home, so he is living large. That is my kind of remote work. You don't have to go very far. What's the temperature outside? Do you even need a little fire? Uh, a lot of the area is holding at 50 or slightly better. There are some spots down to about 46. That's good That's stuff. That's a little chilly. I got to say, man, I went out for my run yesterday afternoon, and this is how miserable the spring has been. I was overheating on that 77-degree sunny run yesterday. I played golf yesterday, and uh, I must say it was just 
perfect. I, it wasn't really sweating. It was absolutely just comfortable. I know mid-70s really nice. are wonderful, yeah. but what about today? Yeah. Today uh, should be, on, on paper, I like to say, at least two to three degrees warmer in many spots than it was yesterday. So we'll see how far we go. These were the highs yesterday. Uh, some of them, Portland and Hillsborough, each at 77. Again, for Portland, it was the first time we've cracked 70 this year. Salem, Kelso, Battleground, 75. Trattel, Scappoo, 78, the warmest in the metro area. McMinnville did 76, and out in Sandy, it was 73. And again, I think most of us will be at least a couple degrees warmer uh, today. Weather pattern is a warm one. High pressure building northward. The storm track arcing well around us. We have a little bit of cloud. I think it's thin stuff for the most part uh, spilling across eastern Washington, eastern Oregon this morning. Here are the numbers Brenda was asking about. A lot of us are in the 50s. It is 48 in Gresham. Sandy's down to 46. Up in Scappoose, it's 48 degrees right now. McMinnville sharing that number. Salem's at 54, but Kaiser's at 49 degrees. And everything's about the temperatures right now, right? 39 in Newport, that's chilly. That, that needs a fire if you're outside. There's 46 in Bend and 42 out in uh, Baker City. Okay, so we've been telling you that tomorrow will be the warmest of the bunch, and in part because an east wind will start to pick up out of the gorge. Not horrendously windy, but our future cast models are noon tomorrow, so coming out of the gorge, sustained winds gusting to about 26 miles per hour. Could be some gusts between 25 and maybe as high as 40 in some of those usual windy areas in the West Gorge. This is primarily going to be a North Valley wind. Notice it shows Salem just a light north wind tomorrow, but that east wind tomorrow will be enough to provide warming temperatures, potentially 80 degrees or 82 along parts of mainly the north coast. By Saturday, the beach is still dry. If you're thinking about getting away for the warm weather, it'll start to cool down 62 to maybe 70 in some spots. And Sunday, we have 50s in the shower. So don't really have any changes to the forecast we've been sharing with you. Uh, upper 70s today in the valley. Winds will be generally light. And then we have 76 in Longview, but 79 in Battleground. And I think Portland and Vancouver have a chance to get up to 80. If we don't make it, we'll be 78 or 79. Tomorrow, record high with the east wind of 86. Still 80 on Saturday. And Sunday shower chance still doesn't look to be much. So I've been saying uh, maybe your plans aren't in that bad a shape for Sunday afternoon.